Whew. All right, let's do this. So in this lesson, I guess, um, I'm working on the greatest common divisor. So it, uh, this particular iteration of finding the greatest common divisor, I'm using the Euclid algorithm. So the Euclid algorithm is essentially you take the, you, you divide the, um, what is the numerator into the denominator or the opposite? Yeah, we'll see. And you take the remainder of that and divide it against the numerator or, or denominator again. Uh, so this is the fastest way to find out the GCD, of course, of two integers, in this case, uh, long integers. So that way any user can put in a large amount of numbers, um, no matter what it is. So, and, and it runs pretty fast, actually. It's a, uh, another example or a example of recursion. So let's do this. So first we want to import the, of course I input, so scanner, Java Utils scanner. Um, let's see. Then we have our class here, common divisor. And, and so the method that we're going to do here, uh, it's going to be a static long method, again, because memory, you know, I want to use 64-bit integers, so that way I'm not, it's not crashing or other stuff. I have memory leaks. Um, and I'm taking two in long integers, the one for the numerator, I'm just naming it numerator just so I can see it, uh, and denominator. So again, th this is just me trying to understand how to code more efficiently, you know, just taking uh, basic things and finding a way to improve its time complexity based on that. And in this case, space complexity too. Because um, when using recursion, I found out, and, and I may be wrong about this, but just what I've seen so far is recursive methods are best when the space complexity doesn't scale to your, to your variables. Uh, whereas, like for example, Fibonacci, if you were to write that recursively, it would be really, really slow because the memory of the variables would drastically increase. So in this case, it's not increasing by, by much. Um, cause it's not, yeah, it's not increasing actually. So the, the variables just say the same, we're just performing a calculation and calling the method itself. So, uh, so first thing we want to do, um, we, we want to handle if the numerator or denominator is zero, because I mean, it would essentially be zero, you know, or, or undefined, but I don't want to handle it like that. So let's, let's do, um, if the, let's say, numerator is equal to zero or the denominator is equal to zero, we, we just want to return zero. Uh, yeah, All right, that's it, that's it. Oops. Right, so after that, we want to, I, I want to have a variable for remainder and calculate what will be the remainder. So we want to take the, uh, we want to divide the denominator into the numerator and get the remainder of that. So in order to perform that operation, we want to get the, or use the modulo operator. So uh, I, I want to cast this to, uh, to an int or as an int because um, otherwise it'll error out because it's, I'm using long integers. So uh, we have numerator modulo denominator, right? Yeah. And after that, we want to say if the remainder is not zero, right? So, so essentially if it does not divide uh, if the numer if the denominator does not divide into the numerator evenly, you know we want to return 
the, uh, we want to recursively return, in this case, the remainder in the, uh, actually no, denominator, sorry, in this spot and the remainder as the denominator. So it'll switch. Um, so the, the, the proper format for this, I think based on uh, the, the Euclid's algorithm, you have initially your, your A over, you know, over B and it, when you're passing in the denominator, you want, you're actually getting the remainder as a prime. So like, like a prime, I think that's how you put it. Yeah, so it switches like that. And that allows us to recursively handle, uh, handle this operation. Um, now, otherwise we just want to return. So in this case, if it is zero, then we want to return the denominator, you know, cause that's what's, what's left. And since we're dividing by that, that's, uh, is what will remain if the remainder is zero. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, we'll see future me. Anyway, now of course we have, you know, now that we have that, we want to have a main function. Uh, and I like typing this stuff out because I'm, I'm just building muscle memory because uh, I'm, I'm actually teaching myself Java as well. So like I, I normally use JavaScript and, and Python, but I really want to start using uh, more object-oriented languages um, that have better performance over uh, when it scales. So, and especially for, for my job, I, I, I definitely want to make sure, I, I just want to do better programming and just level up. That's it, you know, so might as well have one of these under my belt. Um, so again, in the main function here, we have the, the numerator. Mm. Yeah, so we want that to be input uh, next long because the variables or parameters in the Euclid GCD are both long. And again, I'm just doing denominator just for consistency, you know, because I, I don't like having too many different named variables. I, I like things to match. It just helps me see it when I look at it later and, and study it. So, all right, so now I'm just gonna output the result of this. So in this case, it's going to be, you know, GCD. And are you clear? Yeah, give me some. Mm. There we go. Man, autocomplete is great. All right, I hope that works. <laughs> so let's, let's run it and find out if I messed up. So, um, oh, dang. So a, a good test case, um, 35 as the numerator, 50 as the denominator, greatest common divisor is five. Yeah. Um, can do that again. And let's see, there was a larger number too I wanted to use. So uh, the result of this should be four. Oops. Oh. I'm done, I bet. There we go. Yay. All right. So um, again, this is just a better, faster way of getting the greatest common divisor. Uh, it, it's a lot better than just using a naive uh, solution for this, which let me see. I think it'll just be uh, just straight up adding it and just trying to iterate through it until you get the, the, the highest one. You know, that'll take forever, especially if it's larger values like this, you know, so you, you want something where you can, you, you want to limit the amount of steps uh, that you have to find your solution. So, yeah, I, honestly, I think that's, that's what it's really about, limiting steps. And there are different techniques that you can use to limit the amount of steps it takes to perform or to solve your problem. And that, that is what d dictates a good algorithm. So luckily, a lot of these algorithms are already out there. I just got to know about them. And that's why I'm recording it. Booyah. They're free.